This is Twit. Now there's a little wrinkle here. Uh-oh. Yeah. Don't uh, tell me that. Yeah, I just got it. No, 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 no. This is this is good. <laughs> this is actually going to make it easier because there were there are always going to be some people when you write a class and then you inherit it and you start overwriting it, people are going to say, "Well, why would I write it in the first place if I'm just ah, going to override all the methods that I point. have in why there?" Why would you? Well, you know, it's it still does make for better programming. It still does make for better hierarchy, but there are two other tools within C#. -sharp actually with most, uh, within most object-oriented programming languages, that allows me to create something that what? is like a class, but not quite. What? Yeah. Huh? Let's talk about okay. the first one. It's called an <laughs> abstract class. OK. OK, so imagine this. If a class is a blueprint, mm -hmm. so the blueprint that's ready to give to system memory and say, go ahead and yes. make an object out of this. Got that part. An abstract class is more like the architectural outline. It has the shape, oh. it has the general look and feel, but I can't actually create it. I, I, system memory wouldn't know what to do with it because it's incomplete. Oh. It's, it's what we call... So it's kind of like somebody drew a picture and they were like, here, make a blueprint out of this. Yeah, they can't be instant... Uh, classes can be instantiated. Okay. Abstract classes cannot. Oh. Okay, I got okay, it. Okay, okay. So of. they're incomplete. They're incomplete. <laughs> Why so, would you make something incomplete? Ah, oh, this, this, this is exactly what we want to talk about. Why would you make an abstract class? Why would sounds you make like something a waste that's of incomplete? Time. It sounds like a waste of time, but it's not for this reason. Even though it can't be instantiated, I can still create a subclass of that abstract class. You can. I can, just like I did with a regular class, and then I can overwrite the, the, the components that are incomplete and I can fully implement them. Oh. Right. So uh, th think of it this way. Depending on whatever your needs might be. Yes, exactly. Depending on what my needs might be. But the reason why I'll use an abstract class is if, let's say, as a, on a programming team, I want to force other people to use a particular structure. Oh, yeah, that's smart. It's, it's, it's actually, yeah, it's, it's, this is good programming. Yeah. So if I, let's say I'm the lead, pro, the lead programmer for a project, I will create an abstract class that has all the methods that I want people to use. And it has all the, the uh, variables in the way that I want people to use them. Okay. It has all the procedures uh, spelled out in how I want people to write them. And now I tell all my, my programmers, I say, I want you to use this class, this abstract class, to create what you code. Oh, that's awesome. It's, 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 it's It'll like, keep things organized yeah. and hopefully not break. It gives so them a structure. It gives them a structure. That's cool. Yeah, and now um, creating an abstract class or declaring an abstract class is really no different than declaring a class. The only thing that's different is you add the word abstract oh. before class. <laughs> okay, right. that's easy. But that tells C Sharp, that tells C, tells C Sharp, I cannot instantiate this. This is not complete. If you tried to compile an abstract class, it will not work. Yeah, that makes sense. Because there's nothing in there, right? It would probably just give you an error? Uh, yeah. Well, and it would also tell you this is abstract. It's never been fully implemented. Now, a few things about abstract classes. One, they're created with the keyword abstract. Okay. Two, they are incomplete. Therefore, they cannot be inst instantiated. They cannot be created from the class. They can okay. be created from a subclass of that class, a, a, a subclass that has fully implemented the procedures within it. Abstract classes are incomplete. Therefore, they can only be used as sort of what we call a base class. Mm -hmm. And non-abstract classes that are derived from abstract classes must complete any abstract members that are inherited from that abstract class. Ah, oh, okay. So the, this is where the coders come in. This is where the coders <laughs> come in. So if me, again, as my, the lead programmer, I make an abstract class and I have a bunch of abstract members, of abstract methods, so on and so forth, the, the programmer that I tell to use my class can't just take it. Yeah. turn it into a subclass and run it. He actually has to go through, see all the places where I've put abstract and, and put in the proper implementation. He has to fill in the blanks. He has to fill in the blanks.